Azempic is a medication, it's an injectable prescription medication that was introduced to support reduction in type 2 diabetes. And one of the things that's important to understand about type 2 diabetes is that there are risks associated with things like stroke and cardiovascular disease. So Azempic has been proven to assist in supporting reduction in these critical events that could be really life-threatening in patients. We're talking about adults with type 2 diabetes who suffer from potential risks. That's where Ozempic came from and it's been incredibly effective. One of the things that's really important to understand if you actually have a look at Ozempic's website is that this is not designed as a weight loss treatment. It is not the primary intention of the drug. This is a drug that's been designed specifically to support type 2 diabetic patients. And there are a number of others that are similar on the market. You might have heard of Trulicity, Saxenda. These are similar type drugs that have been really clever in terms of how they can treat our type 2 diabetic population. And type 2 diabetes, it is a lifestyle disease. First and foremost, let's understand a little bit more about what type 2 diabetes is. More than anything else, it's a lifestyle related and it's a preventable disease. So we really need to start looking at what are we doing to prevent type 2 diabetes and the significant ever escalating increase in type 2 diabetic patients in our population because this is a really critical problem to treat. So these types of drugs have been proven to be super successful. However, really important to highlight that they were never intended to be just designed for weight loss. And when it comes to weight loss, of course, they do promote diet and exercise, definitely as components of a weight loss regime. No weight loss is going to be effective with an isolated Band-Aid solution. What's happening with Ozempic is that we're seeing all these celebrities who have achieved results. And so we all jump on board and think, wow, if they can do it, we can too. We're so conditioned to wanting quick, fast results and we want them now and is this going to achieve weight loss for me now all i have to do is have an injection it's quick it's easy it's that instant gratification of outcome and result now well that's actually not a sustainable thought process at all and we need to change that conditioned response to how we live in general but also specifically when it comes to weight loss weight management and long-term results what is the vision for weight loss ask yourself the question why do I need to lose weight? Why do I want to lose weight? And what outcomes do I really want? Do I want to just lose 10 kilos so I can look great at a party? Or do I actually really want to have a good weight loss result that's sustainable and is going to give me lifelong better health and better quality of life? There is no such one isolated miracle cure for anyone who is seeking a weight loss result. We don't all want another yo-yo diet response type outcome from this type of solution. I've seen so many of them in my career. Now my GPs just put me on another course of Duramine, which for many, many years is something I heard over and over again. And people would tell me, oh my gosh, but the side effects, they wouldn't sleep, their hair was falling out, they became anxious, suffered all sorts of side effects as a result. And as soon as they went off the drug, they would have this rebound effect of weight regain. Well, that's likely to happen with these type of medications as well. So whilst they're effective during the time that you're actually on a program and taking these injections, if you're not implementing any other positive lifestyle modifications or changes in your behavior, you're not going to have a sustained outcome. So that's why I would come back to asking yourself the question, what about the long term? Where are you going to be 5, 10 and 30 years from now? And these are the types of things that I really want people to start thinking about more, not just about the here and the now and where am I going to be in 12 months. Focus a lot more long term. So first of all, if you're being prescribed Ozempic, who's prescribing it? Is it in a safe environment? Are you getting advice from other health professionals? especially allied health professionals, dietitians, psychologists, the nurses, and all of the supporting allied health team around achieving a weight loss outcome. It's one thing to be prescribed a drug, but then what? How are you actually implementing lifestyle behavioural change? I just think that this is problematic in itself, just to have a script and to think, yes, I know what to do. Because typically, I can tell you from 
over 21 years of experience that people will tell me they've been on every single diet under the sun before they come and talk to us about looking for that permanent solution. And that once again is part of our social conditioned behaviour that we're taught we should be able to do this ourselves and that is actually not accurate or correct. In fact, 98% of diet and exercise programs have been proven to fail at maybe from one year out to five years out. We're looking at a body mass index, for example, 30 and above. You need something that's going to be more powerful, more effective and more durable. There are side effects as well when it comes to looking at patients using Ozempic and it's really important and it's stated clearly on the website that there are risks associated with these drugs. So I would say, please be careful, consider what are the risks as well. It's like everything in life, we've got to weigh up that risk benefit ratio. Is it in my best interests to treat my type two diabetes and am I gonna reduce risk of cardiovascular disease or heart attack, for example? But what about the possible risk of thyroid cancer stated on the website? or thyroid tumours and other cancers are listed clearly on the Ozempic website as being a risk factor for patients using this drug. So I would be really cautionary around who's taking it and the why. So yes, definitely prescribed in an environment where you've got a trusted network of health professionals. So to give you some insight at Weight Loss Solutions Australia, if we were to incorporate a medical weight loss program, it would be done in a very controlled setting where we have a group of not just authorised prescribing practitioners who are capable of understanding exactly how this works and how to prescribe and who to prescribe for, but a team to support patients to achieve goals and understanding what do those goals look like, getting a really great medical history first and foremost and understanding what that looks like but a team of people to support a process that can deliver an outcome. So maybe we might offer this in conjunction with other programs to really give that extra powerful weight loss outcome. That can sometimes be needed and it can be used well in the right setting. But for me, it's all about use it well in the right setting for the right patient for the right reason. And so that's super important, the diagnosis and assessment of each and every patient. And I'm speaking as a non-medical health professional working in this space for over 21 years, that these are the kinds of things that I'm exposed to and, and talk to people about every single day of my life. There are so many things to consider when you're embarking on exploring any weight loss program. First of all, understanding your why. What are your goals? What are your intentions? What are your vision? So I think that's really important to understand. What are you actually looking to achieve? If you're looking for a quick fix, I'd probably caution you and say right now, probably not a good idea because you're not gonna give yourself health outcomes that are worthwhile. We really do wanna look at what are your current medical concerns? Are you taking medications? Do you have any medical risk factors associated with your weight? right now and have a bit of an understanding of what do those risks look like for you in the future. So for example, many patients who we treat, they may already have type 2 diabetes, they might have other medical concerns such as sleep apnea, but not even understand what those risks look like for their future health profile. So really understanding first your personal circumstances before we start to embark on assessment and diagnosis of best treatment. And that can be done, first of all, by working with one of the nursing staff, getting a complete medical history. That will help us understand where to next. So definitely understanding your why, understanding your medical history, your family history, all of those things help us to assess and diagnose what is gonna be the best treatment. And each and every patient is different. It's such an individual subject. There's no one size fits all when it comes to weight loss. That's something really important to understand. We're not shopping off a shopping list here. We're looking for something that is going to be right for you, to treat you, for your problems and for whatever you want to achieve for the long term. So we're having a conversation that's all about long term results, long term outcomes. And let's talk about quality of life as well. We're focused first and foremost on health outcomes, reduction in existing medical conditions, prevention for the future. I want to see people prevent multiple risk of so many different medical conditions that go hand in hand with excess weight. So if we treat the weight issues, hopefully you're never going to need 
a knee reconstruction or you're never going to need to see a cardiologist or an endocrinologist. So preventative health measures are really, really important. And if you've got family history of things like heart disease and you're overweight, you might want to consider, well, how does that actually reflect on my potential risk profile for me? And where am I going to end up in five or 10 years if I don't do something about my weight? So asking yourself the question around what happens to me if I don't, as well as what happens to me if I do, both really important questions to consider. For me, it's also about making sure that quality of life, that's different for everybody, but it might mean you can play with your kids, you can play with your grandchildren. And this is all about that goal assessment as well. So we've got the medical assessment, we're looking at your goals, your expectations, and just your own individual circumstances to make a really well-informed decision. And for me, that does 100% include a multidisciplinary team approach where you've got a complete unit of connected allied health professionals all working to the one goal, and that is best outcome for each and every patient. And make a well-informed decision based on what those outcomes are going to look like for you 5, 10 and 30 years from now, not just how much is it going to cost. So often we do get caught up in that cost equation of what can I afford? And I'm all about trying to make opportunities affordable for patients to achieve results. So I would look at, do you have private health insurance? Can we look at medical finance loans? What other solutions can we actually look for that is going to be accessible, achievable, definitely not ever put anyone in financial duress, but giving them access to the right opportunity that will be giving them that outcome that is for the rest of their lives. Because like anything, we don't want patients to get caught up in that ongoing trap of yo-yo roller coaster dieting. And it's actually quite an interesting equation to look at the financial consideration. So if you've spent years of diet, gym memberships, multiple medications, pharmaceuticals, and all these other things that you might have invested in over years and years of trying and trying and trying and being told that you should be able to do it yourself and it's still not working, maybe have a look at how much have I actually spent over years and what's it going to cost me to get that one outcome that is actually going to be for the rest of my life. We do offer a medical weight loss program, but it's a very controlled program that doesn't just involve a medication solution. It has to be holistic in its approach and it needs to really fulfill actively working with a team of allied health professionals. So the nurses, the dietitians, and the psychologists are critical to any achieving weight loss outcome for all of our patients. I wouldn't put anyone on a program that doesn't include a multidisciplinary team designed to really drive positive behavioural change. And that means behavioural change that can be habit forming for the rest of your life. It's not just about a, a quick fix or a one-off solution that will give you an outcome right now this second. It's around really looking for that long-term sustainable approach. Well, you only have to go to the safety information on the Ozempic website and the first thing that I noticed is that it says Ozempic may cause serious side effects including possible thyroid tumours, including cancer. Tell your healthcare provider if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, hoarseness, trouble swallowing or shortness of breath. These may be symptoms of thyroid cancer. For me personally, if I was to read those kind of warnings straight away, how do I know whether or not I'm the one that could be at risk of something like that? So I think that we've all been blindly wooed into thinking that this is the panacea, this is the new drug for weight loss that's going to be quick and easy and it's going to get, be the answer to all my weight loss dreams. That is so not true. And it's like any other Band-Aid solution. No, it will not work. Nothing like this is actually going to work in isolation. Think about all the diets that you've probably tried in the past, which one actually worked for you and created an opportunity for that sustained long-term result. Most people will not get that result if you've tried keto diet, the pineapple diet, the this diet, the that diet. I mean, there's a billion of them. It's just actually not going to be healthy for the long-term. And more than anything else, often these 
quick fixes come with risks and other problems. And that goes hand in hand with any of these really quite high risky diets as well. Not everyone's going to be able to sustain intermittent fasting. It's not for a lot of people. But are we getting the right advice? Are we talking to the people who are going to give us really clear insight and help us to make well-informed decisions? I would say to anyone, you've got to make a well-informed decision. And what have you got to lose, for example, consulting with a team of health professionals who are super passionate about what they do, who will really help to make well-informed decisions around a whole guided process? That's probably the best solution for me rather than looking at something that you've seen on Instagram or someone on Twitter who's actually made an amazing, unrealistic claim around their weight loss. Yes, maybe it worked for them, but let's wait and see where they're at 12 months or two years from now, because I can guarantee they probably will have put all of their weight back on plus more and carry with that further other potential medical complications. Who knows? I'm all about looking at giving people quality of life, better health, and it's got to be with a vision of where you're going to be at 95, not where you're going to be in 12 months time.